Laura, you work with merchants who aren't on Amazon. Why should they choose Shippo if they're not? Yeah, that's exactly right. So there are a whole lot of e-commerce companies that are not selling on Amazon. And the reason for that is that they have their own brands, they have their own websites, you're using companies like Shopify and Stripe. And then when it comes to shipping, they're competing against Amazon, a retail giant, and the customer expectations that Amazon Prime has set. Uh, so these are exactly our customers. What we do for them is uh, make sure that they can ship like a retail giant, that shipping is not uh, too much cognitive overhead for them and that they're competitive. And um, we've got customers from like tiny SMBs to larger mid-sized e-commerce brands and then also enterprise clients using our technology. Now, obviously we've just been through an incredibly difficult pandemic, even the giants like Amazon experienced shipping challenges. I'm curious what challenges Shippo experienced, how you navigated those challenges and if everything is back to normal now or if there are still difficulties and delays in the system. Yeah, so what we saw during the pandemic was that everyone started buying on the internet. So consumers, instead of walking into stores, they were buying online, they're buying on the internet. And I think that was actually a, an interesting opportunity for a lot of independent businesses, either independent businesses that were uh, already online or businesses moving online for the very first time. And Amazon was starting to see some shipping delays and also consumers had a lot more like awareness for wanting to buy and support, uh, buy, buy from and support independent uh retailers. So we saw, saw a lot of our customers ship more than before, and um, both, both across new customers, but also existing customers. What we saw in the shipping industry, however, was that a lot of existing shipping providers were having a little bit of a hard time keeping up with, these, uh, with this new capacity. Um, and, and we've seen some delays, especially around Christmas. I think that's given the opportunity for new shipping providers to emerge. So in the, in the venture space, I'm actually seeing a lot of funding for new shipping options smaller shipping providers. And that then later on will give our customers just more choice, more options to be able to use different shipping providers depending on what they're best at. And I see that fragmentation as a new trend in the market. And what are you seeing in terms of e-commerce trends? Like, are you seeing shopping online starting to plateau now that the world is uh, opening up? Or is it only going to increase now that these habits have been formed? Like, what does the yeah. second half of the year look like? It's a good question. So uh, the world has started to reopen again, and I, what we're seeing for our customers is that um, they're actually doing they're doing really well. I think these kinds of customer or, or customer habits they're here to stay. And um, I think the the good news for e-commerce businesses is really that this trend of of selling and buying on the internet is not a trend that happened because of the pandemic. It was that the 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 industry was on that trajectory already that more and more people were buying on the internet. And um, these kinds of new habits, I, I we believe they're they're here to stay. I think. Uh, E-commerce has reached a customer segment that was harder to reach previously. Like my, my my parents are buying on the internet, as an example. Everyone's buying on the internet, and they've experienced what how, how convenient that is. And then shipping is just a way for the product to reach the the consumer. Um, the consumer is no longer walking into your store. You have to find a way for the package to arrive at the consumer's doorstep. So uh, you know. Let's talk about the growth opportunities quickly outside the U.S. You are in Germany, France, the U.K., Canada, Australia. Where are we going to see you expand? Because this is obviously a global market. I think that's exactly right. Like shipping is a global business. Our vision is to make sure that w with our platform, it doesn't matter where you are as a merchant, where your inventory is located, doesn't matter where your customer is, you should be able to get your item from A to B w without any any geographical boundaries, any concerns. And um, right now we're in, in uh, America and in, in uh, Canada, a bunch of Western European countries. So we're really doubling down on that international expansion. Uh, more of Western Europe, um, starting to think about Latin America as well. Uh, and, and we want to build a, a global business here. Really this infrastructure component uh, in terms of like the, the, this global shipping network, doesn't matter where you are or your customer are, you're able to ship and make sure the package arrives.